Hello everyone, Mike from Big Mike's Motor Pool here and today we're going to talk about a little project I'm working on that I didn't see too much information on online in the videos or anywhere really and uh, that is going to be drilling safety wire holes in the heads of bolts and I'll show you what I do it may not be as conventional as some methods but it's what works for me and uh, we'll get started and I'll show you the tools we're going to need okay so here's our tool layout and if you're not familiar with what a safety wire hole is in a bolt it's a hole that goes all the way through and that way you can tie it up and keep it from moving find this a lot on race cars and aviation type stuff so here's what we got I'm going to be using like I said a little bit unorthodox um, method I use a collet block and a collet and um, this allows me to have an extra tool around. I have this here and I use it for other things for machining, but it works good for what we're doing. Today I'm working with 7 16 size bolts, which we have here. I need to do 12 holes for a differential carrier that the bolts keep loosening up on. So here's all the tools we got. We got a wrench to turn our bolt in the, in the uh, collet. We're using this nut as a spacer, feeler gauge to go with that. There's a punch, square, 1 16th inch drill bit. There is a uh, chamfering countersink. We've got the channel lock pliers, hammer, the collet, collet block and ring, and the clamp. And I'll show you how that all works together. Okay, so here's your setup. Um, as I mentioned before, my, uh, my setup involves a collet block and a collet, and some of you are going to jump on me about this, uh, because of the way I'm going to tighten this collet. It's supposed to use a spanner wrench back here. I don't have one. I didn't order one, and, uh, the ring is replaceable and fairly cheap, so I'm not too worried about damaging the ring when I use these pliers to tighten it. So you want to make sure you got a flat spot on your bench. If you got any, you know, bumps from welding or any kind of uh, imperfections that can cause this to be off level, it may give you some issues. Um, we're going to use a feeler gauge as part of this, and the feeler gauge is only to be used as a spacer to um, take up the remainder of space once we uh, put our main spacing block in. So to start, you have your collet installed with its ring. And you want to take the clamp, and I'm going to clamp this to the bench so it doesn't move. I already made sure that we're on a fairly flat surface of the bench. Okay, we're going to stick our bolt in. And then this nut, I'm only using as a spacer to try and get the bottom of the bolt sort of straight. Now, it just happens uh, this 25 thousandths size feeler gauge is pretty much a perfect fit. So we're going to slide it underneath the bolt. Of course it's going to make a liar out of me here, but we get it nice and tight. We got the bolt now sitting almost perfectly level, if not perfect. Okay, sometimes if it's loose I'll hold the bolt, but it's pretty tight right now. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten this collet. And uh, I said I'm not doing this the right way. Flame me if you will, but I pretty much don't care about this ring. I'll get another one should I need it. So now this is in the collet block. Oh, and make sure you have the set screw on the collet block up. If you have it on the bottom, since the set screw is loose, it's going to throw this off. And because it's centered, it may make it rock and set this bolt not straight. But even if it doesn't come out straight, it's okay. So now we're going to pop this feeler gauge out of here, take this out. And the next step, we want to go and put a center punch on the head of the bolt that way when we start with this small 1 16th drill bit it doesn't walk now I'm not going to be uh, too precise with this I'm just sort of eyeballing it getting it pretty much uh, centered if, and centered across the, the height as well and we just give it a shot doesn't have to be a tremendously large center punch because the bit is so small so even with this tiny hammer in one shot it's going to be good to go so now that we've done that, our setup's almost complete. 
We're going to take this clamp off and we're going to check it with our square. Now, looking at this one, I don't know if you can see it in the video, it's pretty close. I could adjust it a hair, and that's what I have the wrench for here. So we're just going to twist it slightly, and when I say slightly, I'm talking like just putting pressure on it may be enough. And looking at that, still hair off, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy and content with where we're laying at. So that setup is done now. Um, the, now the next step is to take it over to the drill press and we'll start drilling out this hole here. So here we are, my, uh, I guess you could say it's antique at this point, Walker Turner drill press. A good quality tool. I believe this is from around the 1930s uh, from what I've looked up online. A little bit of modifications I did to it, which I'm not entirely done as you'll see the bearings aren't bolted all the way. But uh, I did that just to make it work because the pieces that were in there are no longer available and very hard to find, even for used ones. So I'm getting this all set up here with the camera. I'm going to try to zoom in some, get a nice shot of this for you. And you'll see what I have here. We have our cutting oil, which I apply with a brush, nice and easy, very controlled. You don't have a big, big mess. We have the collet block in a drill press vise, which is not connected to the table. This is free moving, so you can put it where you want. I like this because I can keep my hands away from the drill bit while I'm working, and it gives a little bit of height and just more mass in general. Um, 1 16th drill bit, and uh, this uh, 1 16th is a uh, a lot of the recommended size for 032 wire. I'm going to be using 045, um, which still should fit. It'd be a little tight. This drill bit is around 60 thousandths, so I'm going to have some room, but not a tremendous amount of room. So to start, we're going to get lined up. We're going to make sure we use a good amount of oil, and I'm going to start drilling. And I may speed the video up throughout this just to, uh, you know, keep you guys from being bored, but. I don't know if you'll hear it in the video when I start drilling, but if sometimes you hear a, a, a sort of a clicking sound coming out of this once I get deeper in. Um, this bit jams up full of stuff because you're getting deep into the bolt. That's what the clicking noise is. And if you don't pull it up and clean it by either hitting it with a brush or just pulling out of the hole and letting the chips fly, then you can have issues where the bit will break and you don't want that because once you break it, you're throwing the bolt away and starting over. So you might see me go in a, in a pecking motion, if you will. But um, I'm going to get started on this drill, and we'll, we'll uh, come right back if I uh, don't let you watch the whole thing. So here we go. we got quite a bit of oil in there now. Just trying to line it up for the first spot. See the bit skips around a bit. And now we're drilling. Take it out, clean it a little more. Because the bit is so flexible, it will skip away from the hole just from vibration of this uh, drill press moving the vise. So always be easy coming back into the hole because you may not be lined up with it. You bring it up and clean it. Right there, I'm missing the hole, so we got to, there we go, back on it. Just move the thing just a hair to get it to go in. And it's starting to make the clicking sound because we're getting deeper. So I'll be coming in and out more than I was previously. You can clear the chips by coming all the way out, or you can just go up a little bit and down. You'll notice that when I do that, the pile on top of the head of the bolt starts to grow some. And that's the chips just falling off of the head of the bolt. Clean it up a little more oil. And come back in nice and easy. We're, all, we're about three quarters of the way through right now. We 
with these small bits, you don't want to force it. And we're through. I forgot to mention this bit uh, is a cobalt steel and it has a uh, titanium nitride coating on it. It's supposed to hold up better for drilling hard and stuff like this grade 8 bolt. So that's what I chose to go with. I did do one with high speed steel and it seemed to work okay. But uh, I figured for the long haul I'll just go with these. I'm going to try to turn the camera here a little bit to get a better frame. The next step here we're going to do to finish this off is we're going to use this one quarter inch 90 degree open centered countersink to chamfer the hole that way the wire isn't sitting on a very sharp edge of the bolt where the hole is it'll just help it when the wire is a little more taut and under tension so we butter up the end of this thing with uh, some oil and we make sure we're not on hammer drill because it'll vibrate and we just put it on there See some down pressure. And that's all it takes to do one side. You don't need to do it a lot. Um, that's a high speed steel bit. But for the amount you're going to be doing, the high speed steel works okay. Let me just flip it over. A little more oil. And we do the other side. If I can find the center here, it'll be good. Right, there we go. So that's that. Our hole is now drilled. It is also chamfered. So I'm going to go uh, clean this off and I'll show you the finished product. Okay. Back on the bench you see I got some other ones I did already. And I'm going to try to get you in nice and tight here. So you can see what's going on. You can see we got a nice beveled edge in the hole. And we have that on both sides. As long as it'll stay focused. I apologize, my camera skills are still a bit crude. But that's it. All you do is loosen up the ring here, spits the bolt out, and you're on to your next one. All these were done the same way. And you can see the threads on them are just beautiful. There's no damage, you know, no issues. The collet block is a very nice way to hold these, very nice and tight. Uh, you can do this job with a drill rig that's specifically made for doing this. But I have the collar block here, and it's something I use for other things in the shop. So I figured why not do it this way. Um, it works for me, and I hopefully, uh, you know, this video has helped, and it'll make it work for you. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments.